We are continuing our work on a problem involving the data for utility, the electricity charges for a one-bedroom apartment. We will construct a histogram. Histograms are useful for representing a numerical variable. Histograms show the shape, spread, and center of a distribution of a numerical variable. In our case, our variable would be the electricity charges. So on the x-axis would be the electricity charges, which would be our variable of interest. And on the y-axis would be either percentage or frequency. Percentage is more useful. Your audience can relate to percentages, so it's preferred. It's more practical to state that in percentage. So the basic steps would be to sort your data, create classes and bins, use software, we will use Excel, edit the histogram as needed. Okay, let's go to Excel. Okay, so in Excel, we already have sorted our data. We already know our upper class limits, which in Excel are called bins. And so I've entered these here. And we've also already calculated our midpoints, which we will need because the default histogram produced by Excel puts the upper class limits on the x-axis, and we will need to edit the histogram to put the midpoints on the x-axis. Let's begin. From data, we go to data analysis. We select histogram. and our input range. It already defaults, but because I had run this earlier, but let's just go through the process. So for our input range would be our entire data set. So we would include labels and everything. So click at your label, then control, shift, and down arrow, and that will highlight your whole data set for you. Uh, then our bins, so our bins, our upper class limits, again include your label, control shift down, arrow key down, and that will highlight that column area for you. Click labels, and we would like it to appear on a new worksheet that will make it easier, and select chart output. Click OK. So here we have new worksheet. So this histogram is, it needs a lot of editing still, and it's quite small. So to work with it, let's enlarge it. You can also just pull on it, move it over. Okay, so we don't need this legend. Let's delete this. We can still make this larger. Right. And our chart title needs editing. So this time we have an existing title here. So just click on it and we can edit from there. So a meaningful title for this would be monthly electricity costs. Our data set is the electricity costs for a one bedroom apartment for a month. So monthly electricity costs allows our viewers or audience to know what our chart is portraying. Right. Let's leave it at frequency for now, since we're just learning the histogram. It would be nice to change it to percentage for our audience, but for right now, to minimize the number of steps involved in editing this histogram, let's keep it at frequency. And this x-axis should not be the bins. It should not be the upper class limits. It should be the class midpoint, so we will need to edit that. But let's begin by changing the title. So we'll just reference it as midpoints. 
All right, now this does have gaps between it and a histogram does not have gaps between it. It represents numerical data, which is continuous, thus there are no gaps. And if we were drawing it by hand, you would understand a little bit more about how class boundaries work. We have class limits, and those have already been presented to you, but the class boundaries involve adding 0.5 on each, the lower and the upper. It's adding 0.5 to the upper and subtracting from the lower, and it makes it continuous. But this is more information than you need at this point. So all you need to do at this point is eliminate the gaps. So let's click on this blue bar here, then right click, and we will format data series. Gap width, no gap. Close. Also, we don't need this more category. So let's just click here. All right, so let's delete that to delete the more. Highlight the cells where it is. Right click. Select delete. And we will shift the cells up. OK. So this was our output from the histogram selection in the data analysis tool. We had the graph and we had this. And that more was default. And we don't need it. See how much better our chart looks without that more category, right? We still have issues here with the x-axis. It's displaying the upper class limits, or our bins, and it should not be. It should be displaying the midpoints. Each of these bars represents a class. And these center points here would be the midpoints of each class. Thus, it's not representative to put the upper class limits here. So we can edit that. What we do is we click here. And then we will select data. On the horizontal axis label, that would be our X down here, we need to edit. We need to eliminate that. So edit. And let's select our range for what we'd like to replace it with. On our previous worksheet, the one which we began the histogram construction on, we did have the midpoints already here. So we will just copy and paste these onto the second sheet. So copy. Paste special, let's do the values. And then, now we could have also put the graph onto the other page, but at this point, because it's referencing the cells right now as we're working with it, it's simplest just to keep it here. Now you can always copy and paste this graph once we've completed the editing. You can copy and paste it to Word. So we do have a decimal place here, which I'd like to eliminate just to streamline the graph. So a quick way to do that is just to highlight our numeric values, then right click and format cells, number, decimal places, and let's decrease that to zero. Okay, now we are ready to edit this x-axis, so click on the um, chart, uh, select data, and then for our horizontal x-axis labels, we need to edit those upper class limits out, so let's press edit, and our numerical values are here, which we want, we can highlight, there are so few, click OK, OK, and we see that these are the class midpoints now which properly represents the histogram. So this is our histogram, and it may be copied and pasted to any other worksheet in your workbook. It may be copied and pasted into Word. The data distribution for the monthly electricity costs variable looks fairly symmetric based on this histogram.
if it were skewed, you wouldn't have this symmetrical shape, so it looks fairly good. We can see that the majority of the values fall in here in this middle area, 